Um, we all understand economic activity um, uh, as the, uh, the undertakings of certain groups within our society. And I'll give a brief um, overview of, of the five groups that have been um, distinguished by the system of national accounts. So these five groups are also called institutional sectors, and this is what all national accounting is, is fundamentally based on. So that we have A, non-financial corporations. This is your average run-of-the-mill company. You know, somebody, an entity that produces something and that gets uh, revenue for it. There's also financial corporations. The difference between non-financial and financial corporations is that Financial corporations deal uh, um, are sort of financial intermediaries, for example, uh, central banks, other depository co uh, corporations, and other financial intermediaries, for example, um, pension funds, insurance corporations, all that. And they're distinguished by the SNA as a separate, uh, as a separate sector. A third, we have the general government, and that includes all levels, um, local, state, federal, depending on which country we talk about. We have the household sector, that's basically uh, private individuals that make purchases and that uh, offer their, their uh, labor and receive a wage for this. And finally, we have non-profit institutions serving households. An example for, uh, for this are non-profit non uh, schools, and they fall under, under the, this fifth category. Actually, schools are a good example um, to show how one type of entity can belong to, to several of those institutions. For example, we have market-oriented schools, like private schools, that belong to the non-financial corporation sector. We have government-funded schools. They are classed within the general government sector. And we have non-for-profit non uh, funded schools that are in this last non-for-profit institution sector. So these are the, uh, basically the, the five groups of, of actors. Now, uh, within the, um, the corporations um, sector, it is good to define a few more terms because they will be uh, very important later on when we get onto the input-output tables. And that is uh, the most fundamental unit is the establishment. I'll just read you the, um, the, uh, the definition. An establishment is an enterprise or a part of it that is situated at a single location within a country uh, in which only a single productive activity accounts for most of its value added. To be classified as an establishment in the system of national accounts, an establishment must produce output that is used by other establishments or by final consumers, meaning goods and services. Okay? So an establishment is basically um, a plant that sits in a location. It doesn't have to be a whole corporation it, it, uh, because you can have uh, several establishments belong to the same company. For example, if you have a big um, uh, vehicle manufacturer, they might have one plant in a location that just produces parts. And that plant would be, then be classed as an establishment that makes automotive parts, but not necessarily vehicles. Now, so you see there is an overarching uh, uh, category to, to what is classed in the SNA as an establishment. So, and that is uh, an institutional unit. An institutional unit is an economic entity that is capable in its own right of owning assets, incurring liabilities, and engaging in economic activities with other entities. So if you had a company, that vehicle manufacturer, that owned this particular establishment that made just the parts, that um, enterprise is an institution because it can own assets. It owns its own production faci uh, facilities, for example. And one of these could be that, that actual plan, this one, this one establishment. Now, uh, an institutional unit, and they are themselves then classed into industries. Or, in other words, an industry is a grouping of establishments engaged in the same or similar kinds of activities. And they could be classified, for example, according to the International Standard Industrial Classification, or the ISIC. And here, uh, this, uh, this definition is, is central for the understanding of input and output tables, because here we can see that uh, the SNA um, collects establishments of all kinds into, into groups that, 
that class these establishments as having similar activities. For example, um, if you were in Japan, you know that uh, there are several uh, motor vehicle manufacturers and they are different uh, institutional units because they are different companies that are in different assets. But uh, under, the, um, under the header of industry, they would be classed in one group, in one industry producing um, automotive vehicles. Okay? So this then you would call uh, or the vehicle manufacturing industry. Now, I give these, uh, these introductions so that you um, understand how initially the measurements are taken at an establishment level because the establishments write down how much expenditure they have and how much uh, revenue they, they get and for those establishments we have balanced accounts and there may also, where there are no establishments but just one, one uh, corporations, they might also exist at the corporations level, but ultimately they are collected by statistical agencies and then accumulated into industry sectors. And then within this aggregation, uh, at this level of aggregations, something like input-output accounts are then established. There are no input-output accounts at the establishment level. It's only at the industry sector level. Okay? But it is, it is good to understand that these accounts are ultimately aggregations of, of uh, business level accounts. Okay. So, most statistical agencies, when they collect um, business accounts and then um, uh, aggregate them into input-output accounts or, or, or for that matter macroeconomic measures just GDP, they follow this handbook and this is the bible of every uh, input-output economist. It's the handbook of national accounting and uh, oh, the handbook of input-output input -output table compilation and analysis. And, uh, but this is, this is very detailed but in, in case uh, you ever have, uh, you need to look up a definition, uh, this is the handbook that you should consult. Since it's a United Nations publication, it's been translated in many languages, um, amongst which uh, there's Arabic. There's Chinese. And there's Russian and many more, as you could imagine.